going forward is all we can do. It's all you can do. Yeah. And this is what will happen. Yeah. And this is, you can't do anything about it. This is your fate and it's sealed. If you're a lover of film and great films and, and war movies, man, yeah. you gotta check out Come and See. <clears throat> do you think this is kind of overkill for a movie about Nazi invasion? Uh, maybe lose the hat. Hello and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies, but before we get started, what are we drinking? Today we're drinking, again, Seven Deadly Sins Red Ale. Alright. Today we're going to bring to you a request by a good friend of ours, Mark Miller. He has a YouTube channel called Corruptar. And he asked us to cover 1985's Come and See. This movie isn't quite a horror movie. It's a war movie. Yeah. But what's more horrific than war. Sometimes the best horror movies aren't actually part of the horror genre. Yeah, it's sheer reality. And if you would like us to review one of your movie requests, feel free to join us on Patreon. Come and See is directed by Elam Kilov and stars Alexei Kravchenko. The movie starts off in 1943 during the Nazi invasion of Belarus. We get introduced to a little boy named Florian and he has a friend and they're on like this beach and they're digging around. There's all these pieces of equipment and everything that have been blown up and buried in the sand and stuff and playing war a little bit, right? Flora, he ends up digging up a, a rifle. There's this old man, too, that's there giving the kids shit. Shouldn't be digging anything up. It's it's bad luck. He looks up and he sees this German bomber in the sky just flying around. Florian ends up making his way back to his house in this town. And we get introduced to his mother and his two little sisters. He wants to go off and fight, right? His mom is telling him, like, you're an idiot. What are you talking about? You're not going anywhere. He looks over and he sees this face in the window. And it's these two soldiers that have come to sort of recruit for their little fighting unit that they have. Joins right up and, like, his mother is frantic. Like, no, what are you doing? You're, you're going to kill yourself. The soldiers don't listen to her either. No. Just drag them off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They have Florian doing all the, you know, all the shitty jobs. He's all cleaning out all these cauldrons and <laughs> yeah. shit with all these leaves. Yeah, <laughs> all these branches and shit. He's got his rifle and he's doing a bit of guard duty. And there's somebody coming up and walking towards him. And he calls out. He's like, password. And there's no answer. He doesn't answer back. And he's like, what's the password? Still no answer. And the guy comes right up to him. And he sort of tells him, he's like, you call out and ask for the password and they don't say anything, you shoot. He's like, but you're the commander. He's like, doesn't matter. You shoot. They get ready to go off and actually fight the enemy. End up leaving Florian behind. He's all got to trade his boots with some other's old guy. Yeah, because you know? he's got good boots. <laughs> yeah, fighting boots. So he stays behind and he runs into this girl, Glacia. Crying. Yeah, that he can't go off to fight. And she's crying too. There's a switch that's kind of flipped. And they go from crying to hysterical laughing. All of a sudden... They look up in the sky and there's a plane and there's paratroopers that start exiting the plane. There's bombs that start striking and there's a paratrooper that gets caught in the tree and Florid kind of, he's got his rifle but he doesn't really know what to do. It's so frantic and they end up just taking off. They hide out for a bit in the forest and when everything is kind of calmed down, they make their way to Flora's village. Everything's deserted, and Flora was kind of happy, actually, to get back to his home and see his mom and his two sisters. Everybody's gone. There's nothing left but flies. Flora kind of gets a little frantic. They must be on an island. There's an island that everybody goes to. While they're running, Glacia kind of looks back and sees behind this building all these dead bodies that are heaped up. She starts getting frantic and crying. They get kind of into this bog and they have to make their way and trudge through all this shit to get onto this island. They're both hysterical. And he starts getting mad at her because she's like, everyone's dead, they're all dead. He doesn't want to believe it. He pushes her into the bog. And this guy comes out of nowhere. And you find out, oh, you know, there are villagers on this yeah. little island in the bog. Mom and his sisters didn't make it. They're dead. He goes almost like catatonic. 
and everyone's kind of trying to console him and he's blaming himself it was his fault he kind of comes out of it and sees these guys starting to like make this weird hitler effigy it's like they yeah. got this human skull and they start putting mud and clay on it to make make a face there's no food on this island and they're all gonna starve so a couple of the men well they gotta go get food and they think they know where there's like a, an abandoned warehouse flora wants to join them and they bring this hitler effigy yeah with they're, they're all they're carrying, like, carrying it. it's all heavy and like what a burden but I guess they have a plan for the Hitler effigy. But on their way there to the storehouse, they come across where there's all these landmines and like everyone gets blown up except for Flora and one other guy. Crazy scene, like they're just walking and suddenly you hear these explosions and you see this foot. Yeah, and they just pick up the foot and like, what the fuck? And he all throws it in that crater. Yeah, and then, and they just keep walking. Like, what can you do? You yeah. just keep going, right? But they look above and you hear that drone again and you see the bomber flying. Yeah. They come across this farmhouse and they look in and it's like, oh, this old guy seems to be eating pretty well and kind of take him hostage and they're like, we need your cow and they take the cow out they don't want to steal the cow all they want is the milk mm -hmm. they start milking the cow as they're milking the cow all this gunfire starts coming out of nowhere cutting right through the fucking air in the middle of the night it looks like laser beams almost. yeah yeah it's like that tracer fire flora gets up and while companion there is shot dead and so is the cow it comes across this other old guy who's like in the mist in this fog and he's got yeah. this horse with a cart and he tries holding the guy up to steal his horse and his cart because he needs the horse for food he needs <laughs> something he needs to bring something back yeah. to the people right and then the ss start coming you hear in the background like trucks and tanks and old man's like get on the cart you're now my grandson. Buries his gun and his clothes and everything. Old man takes him back to his village through the mist, kind of avoiding the SS right yeah. through this mist. Get to the old man's house. Everyone's hiding out there. The SS come in and of course they're all feeding them schnapps. Yeah, they're yeah, yeah. They all have schnapps. to fucking feed them and give them booze and yeah. everything. Everything seems like it might be going okay. Maybe they're just checking the place out. And suddenly they start hurting everyone outside. Knows after what happened to his village, what's going to happen. They're trying to warn people, yeah. they're going to kill everyone. They're going to slaughter us. And they force everyone into this like church, this abandoned church. Lock the doors, right? Mm -hmm. And you can see them starting torches up. Germans tell them through the barn doors, you can leave, but you have to leave the children behind. Yeah. Everyone's like, we, we can't just leave the children behind, right? So no one leaves. And that's where we're gonna end the plot. If you wanna see how the movie ends, keep watching the movie. But why should you watch this movie? One of the best war movies that I think we've ever seen. What makes it one of the best is the sheer realism of the whole thing. It takes place during the Nazi invasion of Russia, right? Belarusia. They didn't just mean to conquer. That was the thing about it. They had a systematic plan to wipe the people out. They didn't just want to capture territory. That's a hell of a fucking thing, knowing that that is what's going to happen to you. It's yeah. horrific. And that's horrific, and that's why sometimes a movie like this is actually a much better horror movie than a real horror movie. <laughs> exactly. This is reality, it's fucking horrific. And it's seen through a child's eyes, which makes it all that even more scary. Mm -hmm. That this is just a kid who starts off by wanting to fight, no less, right? And kind of being happy about it yeah. and not understanding the realities of what's really happening. Bit of a juxtaposition of it with this old man who n does know. Yeah. And he's trying to warn the kids. Basically he's saying, don't play with fire. Yeah. Because you're going to get burned. Don't play war. And Flora wants to go and play war. The actor for Flora does a perfect job of being almost like a one-man show. His whole character arc from start to finish and how he transforms emotionally and physically too yeah. throughout the whole movie and what the situation really does to him. He starts off as such a young, naive child. As he gets into each situation in the movie, it changes him. Not for the better, it's for the worse. Until the very end, when he just is a broken down shell 
of himself. Looks like he's aged 50 years. He looks like an old man. Mm -hmm. He doesn't even look like a kid anymore. That scene in the camp where he should have shot, couldn't do it. And he wasn't ready, right? He wasn't ready mentally. Fast forward towards the end of the movie and all the shit that he's gone through, and he starts to fire that rifle. Yeah. He never fires a shot through the whole movie until the end. This is one of the best child performances I've ever seen in a movie ever. Kind of in his teens, like I think early teens. So not quite a kid, mm. but still, like for, for that age to be able to pull this off, that's yeah. that is one of the best performances I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, that's right. And there's barely any dialogue. Yeah, very little dialogue. It's all in expression. The fact there isn't much dialogue in this movie is great because there wouldn't be like right like a lot of these movies just the characters explaining the situation mm -hmm. because it helps the viewer understand what's going on well they don't do that in this you just have to experience it the way he experienced it there is no story it's just war yeah it's purely just what's happening the movie relies mostly on visuals yeah you know there is dialogue of course but the dialogue doesn't actually drive the movie. Doesn't, it's all visuals. It doesn't move the plot forward. No. No, not at all. We follow Flora, right? And then that's kind of what drives the plot, but it's not what gets the plot through to you. Yeah. It's what you see. And like a lot of what you see, most of the time can be confusing. Yeah. Because it's so hectic. And you're just as confused as like Flora is in this situation because it's like, he doesn't know what he's getting himself into and you also kind of don't know what you're getting yourself into watching this movie literally live in his shoes seeing all this crazy stuff happen and it's the way it's shot and edited it's just as confusing to you yeah yeah that's right yeah because like the way it's done there's a lot of like singular shots too where it's like a lot of long shots no cuts yeah yeah and so you're only given this little window Mm -hmm. of what to see, right? Which is basically what Flora is kind of seeing too. It's done really well in that respect where you feel like you're there. I love that, that you never get the bird's eye view. Mm -hmm. You just get his point of view and you never get the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. You just experience what's happening in the small little area. And that is enough to experience the complete horror of war and invasion. Yeah. You don't need to know that they've invaded all these other territories. It's just you exactly. in, your, in your little village here. That's all that fucking matters. Yeah. The rest, the, the rest doesn't matter to you. The the technology was such that you wouldn't find out. Yeah, you it's know. all word of mouth. And it's not even important no. what's happening far no. away. No. It's only important what's happening to you right here, right now. Exactly. And that's what the movie's kind of all about, is right here, right now. This is a fucking fantastic looking movie. First of all, it doesn't look like it's filmed in 85. It kind of looks like a modern movie as far as just like the quality of the film. You know, you don't think of like big blockbuster looking Soviet films, but this like, it looks fantastic. It's the visuals and the atmosphere. Obviously they shot it on location. You, you have to. There's always this fog, never sunny. There's one spot where it's sunny, mm -hmm. but it's rarely ever sunny. It's always drab and foggy you feel like claustrophobic yeah watching this movie even though they're out in the middle of nowhere you kind of know that there's expanse all around right you can get anywhere you could run anywhere but you kind of can't really get away yeah you're kind of stuck the effects if you want to call them effects where it's just real bullets flying through the air like mm -hmm. it's Apparently they use real bullets for maybe not the whole movie, but part of the movie. Yeah. Like there's that one scene where they're in the field. You don't know where it's coming from. You just see the gunfire going in the night. Yeah. It's like, whoa, it looks crazy. <laughs> yeah. And because it's real, and right? It's horrifying. It's like, yeah. And then it cuts down the, 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 the cow. And you're like, how did they do that? It looks like the cow actually did get did shot. Did they shoot a it's real like, cow in this? It's like, it's yeah. so it, it's so well done where you are buying it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, you're buying into the realism of this. The sound design too for this movie is wild. It's so wild. Your senses are constantly bombarded by the noises that Flora is experiencing. There's always this low tone hum Yeah. that's in, in your ear, right? And 
a lot of times he looks up and he sees a, like this bomber flying and that's yeah. kind of where this sort of tone comes from a lot yeah. of times, you know? And sometimes it doesn't even sound like a bomber. It just sounds like a no. low note on a synthesizer just like for like a good half hour through the movie just... Yeah, yeah. But I love how they do that. They associate yeah. the noise with that. I kind of hearken that to like, you know, in a slasher movie where they they attribute like a noise to the killer. Yeah. And then so you don't need to see the killer, you just need to hear the noise yeah. and you know he's there. Yeah. Kind of the same thing. Yeah, they're associating that low hum with the bomber. So the yeah. bomber's always there. Always scanning. Watching, is, yeah, right? there's always, the, the German army is there, yeah. you know? Yeah. And you don't need to see them. Watching and thinking like, how long did it take him to just do the sound in this movie? Yeah. It was like a yeah. year. It's like, crazy. After the explosions happen in the forest and then Flora's hearing's all fucked up. And in most movies, it's like you hear that high pitched me. Yeah. And then it goes a little deaf and then like two minutes later, they're fine. In this movie, it's like half hour later, he's, he's still muffled. Like a good chunk of the movie is muffled because he's muffled. He's yeah, muffled. His hearing right? yeah, is fucked. An interactive experience, right? It kind it's of like, is, yeah. It's, it's incredible. And for 85, the way they managed to do that, it's like, holy fuck. And by the end, it's like... When I took, because I wore headphones too when I watched oh, this. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I took them off, I was like, I was completely spent. Yeah. I just, I went to bed. This movie does drain you of everything. Yeah. It's that immersive, right? It's just, yeah. like you said, it, it, it bombards your senses and then drains all your senses out mm -hmm. of you afterwards. Yeah. And it's like, oh my God. And then emotionally too, like all the shit that Flora runs into, it just fucking drains you. And the movie's almost as surrealistic as it is realistic yeah it's kind of neat how it balances the realism with the surrealism yeah like because the sound design is kind of surrealistic but it helps drive the suspense and drive the emotion and they do a lot of weird things too like that scene where in the forest and suddenly they go from being shell-shocked to like prancing in the rain mm -hmm. and the sun's out and they're shaking the trees and it they get the water down from the trees and it suddenly it's this happy fantasy type thing and then suddenly they're like walking down the trail and it's all drab again it's like the, the movie does neat things like that yeah. neat contrasts meant to lift you up and then it's meant to just give you a fucking nosedive so you feel it then at the end it gets kind of surrealistic and almost artsy in a way yeah. too where flora's firing at this picture and then you start seeing all this footage of like like real footage mm -hmm. of world war ii and hitler in reverse. In reverse, and it's playing backwards, and he's shooting, and he keeps playing backwards, and it's cutting between Flora shooting and all this World War II footage. Then it stops to a picture of Hitler's mother holding him as a baby. Yeah, and he then he can't shoot. He doesn't shoot. And that's like super interesting, like why doesn't he shoot? The images are going backwards, right? And so the fact that when it stops on Hitler as a baby, he doesn't shoot, so it kind of maybe thinking that it's this going forward is all we can do. It's all you can do. Yeah. And this is what will happen. Yeah. And this is, you can't do anything about it. This is your fate and it's sealed. I think that's pretty much it. It could also be that he's hasn't completely lost his humanity. We yep. still can't pull the trigger on like a woman holding her baby, even if it is. Yeah. Even Hitler. if it is Hitler. Yeah. It could be both, you know, who mm -hmm. knows, but that's up to the viewer to decide. That's right, yeah. Which is very interesting. For a war movie, it's funny because, like, as horrific as this movie is, and as realistic as it is, and traumatizing mm -hmm. as it is, there's actually, like, a lack of violence. Yeah. You don't really see much happen in the form of, like, in-your-face gore or violence you see what flora sees so he may not see everything because he's trying to run away and he's frantic a lot of war movies you know schindler's list for example you know gun to the head pull yeah. the trigger you see the whole thing you don't really see that here you kind of see things either start to happen and then they run away and don't see it or they they show up later and you see the aftermath yeah yeah but you don't really see like this blatant violence, which is kind of interesting that they don't do that in a movie this horrific. Yeah, yeah. 
and it, a lot of it is driven too by Flor, Flora's expressions too, yeah. right? So you don't need to see it, but you see it on his face, how scared he is of seeing these dead bodies yeah. or whatever the case may be, right? And that's enough. But I'd say that opening scene in Saving Private Ryan owes a lot to this movie as far as like just trying to capture what's really happening. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that opening scene in Saving Private Ryan would have ever been shot the way it's shot if it wasn't for this movie. Yeah, that's true because like Tom Hanks, there's that scene where Tom Hanks, his hearing goes yeah, for yeah, a bit. Yeah. And there's that and he goes into that weird state and stuff. It's like directly out of this. It may not be a horror movie, but it's a horrific yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah about what really happened to these poor villages. It's stuff that we never want to even fathom happening to us. Beautiful chaos in a way, It's because it, it's shot so well where you can't help but think that it's beautiful, but it's depicting some horrible things. Yeah. It's totally chaotic. It is it is a trip. Trip of the senses, man. Yeah. All, all the way through from start to finish. It, it may not be everyone's bag, but uh, if you're a lover of film and great films and and war movies, man, yeah, got to check out Come and See. Yeah, it's a it's definitely a movie that like you should see at least once. Yeah, I think you know just to appreciate it. Until next time, keep drinking. You'll need to after this movie. <laughs>